That was a short chapter, right? Because I didn't do anything of that I was supposed to. I just said, get to go back to sleep. Episode 9. Did you learn anything in school? Eva laughed, stretching out her left hand and looking at her engagement ring. Uh, a sin... sin douche Is a figure... Oh, figure of speech! Uh, synecdoche, whatever. That's how you spell it? Shit. sin I said? Uh... It's when you use part of something to refer to the whole- yeah, 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 a synecdoche, or whatever, how you say it. Or did you really think you were going to just take my hand in marriage? When you told Krupa you were marrying Eva, you told him that she's, uh, what she said about synecdoches. Krupa waited for you to finish and smiled. He said you'd be very, very lucky. Not only have you found someone you loved, but you've also learned a thing or two. A few weeks later, Cooper could, uh, would have dinner at your house and meet Eva. They'd talk about work, about books, about you. Holy crap. One of them would mention the word synecdoche, and they would start to laugh. They'd look for examples, ignoring your complaints, laughing at your annoyance. They clinked every glass, and they'd come up to a new one with a new one. Is that me, dude? Oh, it's that one guy. Synecdoche. It's been a long time since he thought of it. In loose stations of the cross, he wasn't carrying any cross. He doesn't carry any cross. Condemned and cross are the same thing. You're not sure if this is, a, is an example of synecdoche or not. Time is running out. You need to act. You touch your chest and feel your microphone you carry between your fourth and fifth rib. Wow, fourth and fifth rib? The second and third intercostal intercontinental space. <laughs> That's the uh, for a uh, uh, for a thing. Second and third intercostal spacing between the ribs for to do a pressure like three kings. <laughs> when you speak about ribs, it always freaking gets to me. The intercostal con inter space between the second and third rib. It's funny, dude. For a uh, the hole, you you so you could relieve pressure in the chest. You need some kind of evidence or whatever that the hell's going on to explain your actions to the agency. Cars are moving slowly, pretending at constant speed. I wonder what might happen if the cars were in front were to speed up, or well, one of the cars in the back suddenly slammed on the brakes. They would be dismembered. You know that dismembered is a form of execution has a long history, like the horses. And the common way is to tie the condemned man's limbs to a foot. Yeah, that's right. You never heard of any way. I, dude, there's like some videos. It's so gruesome. You know, it always drags for one limb. It doesn't just all four just tear off. It, it's very gruesome. Look at your hand clenching a fist to stomp the trembling. You don't know how much more you can tank. What was his name? Struggle to recall the name of the Peruvian leader of the Spanish tried to dismember it but couldn't. Yeah. Atahualpa? Tupac Amaru? Oscar? Atapalta? Oh no. Is it? Oh no. Yeah, it's Tupac. Tupac Amaru, the leader of the Great Rebellion. You know, you can listen to that, Tupac. Think about your mother's family. How little you know of their history. Keep your brain busy from times in, uh, of distress is the only way to keep you from going crazy, Boulder. Cooper, I told you about a soldier in World War One who recited the first 200 prime numbers in them from memory. His bombs fell in the trenches. The fragments of his comrades flew through the air. You miss Cooper. And you miss your life beyond fiction. Take a deep breath and hold your head. Exorcism is at high speeds. Miracle in the road is now this. Tony really believe that what he preaches? Holy shit. You no longer have any doubt that Tony is preparing something big tonight. Well, Nick checks every simple oh single car as he arrives to the barn. You can't blow your cover now. You reach your clothes and yank out your microphone. Oh, yeah, yeah, she has a fucking metal detector. Roll out the window and wait for the right moment to get rid of it. Toss the mic.
Uh oh. You are pulled violently from the car and tied it. Uh oh. Uh oh. Sleep with the fishes, dude. The other guy? Roll down the passenger window. Oh. When he scans your car and finds nothing, she motions for you to park the car and breathe a sigh of relief. Knock one of the people with. Oh, damn. Without believing what you're saying. Damn, look at that. He can crucify this motherfucker with a stop sign? What is that? Or is it a piece of wood? Turned out everything Tony and the Bonson Knights have done it seemed more like some sort of fairground trick. Work of grandstanding showmanship, albeit heavy laced with religious overtones. But this, how far would Tony actually go? Do you know Longinus? <laughs> According to the Gospel of John, the Roman soldiers are crucified. They didn't break his legs, as a customary, uh, to hasten the death of the crucified. Oh yeah, they just gutted him, right? Do you know why? Because they thought Jesus was already dead. But one of the Romans, identified as in some text by a centurion by the name of Longinus, he pierced him with a spear, and then he bathed in the baptism, right? To confirm that Jesus was dead. You look around you. Tony's as his audience is captivated. Do you understand the importance of what Longinus did? How do you pronounce that? I'm not really good with Latin. Let me see. Dude, I was so off. It's like Longinus or something like that. To find out if Jesus was already dead, he corroborated uh, a fact by provoking the same act, eliminating all contingencies, and confirming the idea that one way or another, our destiny is already written. Did you hear that, Lou? I don't need you. I don't need you. The scream is lost amongst the cheering of the crowd. Can't take it anymore. You have to do something. Don't do anything, dude. Charge at the cross. Get the son of a bitch! Die trying to be a hero. Because the punch is forward and kick is backward. on your shoulder. The adrenaline keeps you on your feet. A helicopter? A blow on the back of your head prevents you from fully formula formulating the thought. Monique. Help me with these two. No, a helicopter. Should have just kept his mouth shut, dude. Just turn into the Bonson Knights, dude. <laughs> just turn completely into a Bonson Knight for reals, like that. Episode 10. First thing you hear off the rushing of the air, the back of your head hurts. Try to sit up. Easy, you son of a bitch. Like a slap in the face, Tony's voice jolts you back to the present. You're in the helicopter. How much longer, Monique? Doesn't reply. The noise inside the helicopter is deafening. Monique! How much longer? Ten minutes to the nearest F5. Did you hear that, Boulder? In ten minutes you're going down in hell. You fucked us, you piece of shit. Uh, I always
always suspected it. You showed up not long after that other traitor. Cupra. Your attention, uh, your attempts to mask your reaction to hearing that name is are worthless. Tony knows. We're getting close. Hold on tight. Wanna know secret boulder? We fed Krupa into a tornado too! Uh oh. You feel fury gripping every muscle in your body. Tony stares at you with eyes and intensity you've rarely seen. And you wanna hurt him. You get ready to headbutt him, but Tony knows. Looking you in the eye the whole time, he pulls his head back and avoids the attack. Get the fuck up! He raises the gun and makes you move towards the door. Without saying anything else? Oh, kicks you hard in the stomach and you fall to your death. Oh, the kid catches him off guard. You get up as fast as you can. Tony! What's going on back there? Turbulence increases and everything spins. Nothing I can't handle. Keep us flying. stomach churns. The helicopter is losing altitude. Tree, soil, water. Boulder! Everything flashes by in a second. Eva, Olivia, Cupra, the breakfast, the beers, the laughs, the cups of coffee, your daughter's drawings. Lou. It's over. Explosion is spectacular. The pace difficult to describe overwhelms you, and you realize how much your body aches. I need to see my family, Lou. Stop being bolder, and just be me again. Dude, this game is pretty badass, man. This this is really nice. I gotta play their other ones. Even though I suck at reading and shit like that, it's very entertaining. I can't load anything. I'll let it run. No music? What's going on? Japan PR? Oh. Oh. They really did have a drawing for the t the three uh, things. That's pretty cool. It was like a real person who drew a real kid. What happened? Uh oh, time to go back home. So they weren't dead. I just couldn't believe it. This whole fantasy with this F5 tornado stuff and all that things is pretty insane. What happened to Cooper? Like, Cooper, like, I know thrown in tornado, but still. their other games. As soon as it goes on Steam sale, so I'll... Oh, well, there's extra. Oh, the thing. Okay, yeah, we saw it. We saw it, dude. Is there one more? It's fine. I like oh, my playthrough. <laughs> Whatever, it don't matter. Yeah, but I see, I need like to play Mothman and the fucking Varney Lake, whatever. 
I need to play those too. I don't want to play it here. I think it's just a preview because I don't have the game. But yeah, once they get those games going to allow immediately buy it and, and play through it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. See you next time. Alright Dexter, JR wanted me to give you a little shout out. He says to call you a bastard, but I've never met you. You might be perfectly nice for all I know, you bastard. Like, comment and subscribe, or I'll break your fucking legs.